if it was all said and done and you entered the draft right now as a number one high schooler, Cooper Flag's in there, Ace Bailey is in there, do you feel like you're number one pick worthy? Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. And I'm joined by my guys, Jackie Long Yee! and Dallas Rutherford. What's up, fellas? How we doing? How what we up? Doing? What up? How we doing? Hey, episode you know, two, baby. Talk to me. Talk episode to me. one was lovely. They were, I had seen in the comments, everybody was loving it. They they like it, you know, so I, I feel Kelly good about this Kelly was a phenomenal one. guest. Shout out. Shout out KO. He was, he was good. Yeah. KO was amazing. Andy, a good ass. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed in both of you. Why? Wow. Today's a monumental day, and I'm surprised that no one's made a comment yet about it. Hold on, for me, for me personally, this is a big day. Let me like, think. if you look let at me, me right now, Martin. this is like I'm stepping out my comfort oh! zone a little bit. He does you see what I'm saying, Bucky? <laughs> You he see, not head even head. the pre-recording. He's we let the baldy out today. Head. He's showing the baldy. Oh, it's a look miracle. at the shine. Look at look I at this. I didn't even I know this. I see myself twice mm-hmm. in the camera mm-hmm. on Dallas' head. <laughs> I thought I see myself twice. Yeah. Hold on, yeah, man. Gotta, let me see. I can see myself. Hold I on. gotta. I gotta ask, bro. What 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 came to look the decision Eddie. to show the ball? Honestly, I, I I was getting ready, and I was like, you know ran what? Out of hats? Like, no, never run out of hats. <laughs> Shout out, never kill the hype. But uh, I just was like, you know what? You know, I'm comfortable with my bald head. I don't like people thinking like that I'm not okay wearing a hat. Like I'm yeah. perfectly fine with it. I just haven't done it. So I thought today would be the day that I just let that th- that thing out. You know what? That is crazy. Oh, I did man, not. I, love I did not notice it. The big day, did, bro. It, big day. I'm and I'm not gonna lie, P. I didn't notice it neither. I'm and I'm usually the one that's nosy. My nosy yeah. is getting mm-hmm. old or something. Yeah, uh, something. that's crazy. Uh, something. You got a damn, birthday that, coming up. Who do? Maybe, maybe you. Huh? <laughs> you, you, uh, you can't. You high? You can hear? <laughs> Come on. Is it because you get no? You can't. You, you ain't notice. You ain't notice the bald nobody. head. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. The, hey, the, the the first sign is denial, P. Mm. Yeah, listen, That's listen. the first denial. When you get a, you start calling people uh, the wrong name. All I can name. say is, is 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 being the age of forty in my life. I'm gonna be honest. It's been great. I, I'm still 40 what? To run. I'm turning 43. You know, I'm 42 okay, now, there we of go. course, but okay. I'm turning 43. But to be turning 43, it might be a few things. Like, you know, my, my body aches a little big and can't stretch as much as, as I can, a little stiff. But, you know, other than that, I can still move around, you know, still in the weight room. I'm still good in them bed sheets. You dig? So, um, <laughs> you know, er- everything, everything at my age is you still sick, going and still flowing. And okay. I'm still able to enjoy my life every day. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I got a lot of energy. And, you know, turning 43, like everybody keep asking me, what you doing for your birthday? Jackie, what you doing? Being 43. That's it. I'm Being chilling 43. and relaxing. As long as I'm with my family at dinner or something to my friends, I'm happy, man. Getting love is more exciting. I'm going to put you yeah. on the spot here. Please do. You know how people say they turn 23. This is year of Michael Jordan. They turn 33. This is my Larry Bird year. Mm-hmm. You're turning 43. I'm a th- what number can you can you throw out that that who wore number 43 that you can match that with? This is Jackie's year of. And you said they wore 43? Wore 43. I, gotta, I only I, got one in mind. So I, I I don't fault you if you can't think of one. I got a good one. Got, 43. That's, a, a that's just a weird number. That's it can why. be basketball. It could be football. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Let's keep I it basketball. Let's keep it basketball. Who you know I would have said something like Ron Artest. Oh, I, I you know, but he would do he something like that. 93. 43. No, Michael Jordan was Help 45. him out. Help him out, Dallas. Who you got? Help me out, Dal. I'm going to mess his name up, though. But Thanis, Thanis, Thanis Antetokounmpo. He wears number oh, 43. The Nassus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he wears 43. Okay, okay, shout out to Nassus. Shout out to yeah, Nassus, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Year shout of the Nassus. To, I'm the year of the Nassus, then, man. <laughs> I, I, I take it. I take I was going to go Troy Palomalu. That's who I knew wore 43. Okay, I love Troy, Troy Palomalu, too, man. Because you got the hair. 
Right. I got the hair and I can make it. I can get the, 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 the we might, hey, uh, uh, head and shoulders, <laughs> head and shoulders. I can get that one day too. Come on now. I, you know, uh, I don't know the year he retired, but yeah, I can be the Troy, yeah. the, uh, the, the Palomalu, all that. Hey, I love it. Energy is high. Before we get rolling, here's what we have in store for today's episode. We got the number one player in the country, AJ DeBanza, stopping by to join us for a great conversation. We got three man weave. We'll talk about the iconic impact of Stephen Curry, some Denzel Washington Oscar talk, and close things with some hilarious questions in the two minute report. And as a reminder, we taping this before the NBA opening night. But first, fellas, since we got AJ on the show today, it got me thinking about high school hoop mixtapes. Mm. So I got to ask collectively. What is the greatest high school basketball mixtape of all time? And it's mm. very impressive. I think it's one that stands out to me. Uh, all time? Well, all time? high school basketball tape mixtapes kind of got popularized around the time you were in high school, P. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? If they were doing we. these highlights. Yeah, yeah, with- we same age. Damn, what was that? Okay, that's fair. Okay, yeah, me too. Cool. But this people are going to think I'm being biased. But I'm going with Drew Holiday's high school mixtape. It's up Drew there, Holiday's. bro. Drew has a crazy high school mixtape. Go look it up. You might see your boy catching a few passes, throwing a few <laughs> lobs. Um, but Drew's is nasty. Drew's, Drew's is, is nasty. nasty. I think I I got to go with John Wall. John Wall's is nasty. John too. Wall's high school tape was crazy. I think John Wall yeah. and Zion are probably like top two high school mixtapes. Here's some Brandon Jennings had Brandon a cold Jennings, mixtape. Brandon uh, Jennings had a crazy mixtape. Austin Rivers. Y'all know who I'm going to say. <sighs> Here we go. His last name started Lazo. with both. Lazo or LaMelo, which name, one? <laughs> he, I, I'm going to say both. La, you know Lazo, Lazo oh, yeah. they both did. They both I'm going to say both. You know? Both of so, them. I'm going to go with both, especially just the youngster. He scored, what, 93, 94 points in a high school game? LaMelo? Yeah. yeah Cherry yeah, yeah. picking. I mean, he wasn't cherry picking, though. He scored. You can't and, uh, they they weren't cherry shots. picking in high school. Let's let's that. I just said he was. That he play was, was he, wide open every time. They're playing yeah. football. Guard me. I still yeah. give him an awesome mixtape, man. It, it was impressive. All, all of them was impressive. They all had some some impressive highlights. Hey, that, that was some good ass picks. Everybody has some great takes on that. Dow, which you brought in, was 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 great with Drew Bonky. Obviously, Lamelo and and Lonzo has some great mixtapes. I think John. Zion has some great tapes, but we're going to keep the show running. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Three Man Weed. We wanted to take a brief from the episode to let you know that Prize Picks is the best place to get the real money sports action. With over 5 million members across the country, it's the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. Jackie, I love Prize Picks. I use it every weekend on Sundays, especially when I'm watching the NFL. And I hope you guys listened to me last week. I'm taking him again this week, but I'm taking more on any statistic that involves B. John Robinson. <laughs> B. John Robinson. I'm going with my boy, Derrick Henry. That's who I'm going okay. with. You feel me? Okay. I'm always going more with him no matter what. You already know what it is. Love it. Love it. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks. So sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Whether you think CD Lamb will continue to get more targets or Derrick's Henry rushing totals will be a little light this week, prize picks has you covered on every option, baby. Download the app today and use code PODCASTP to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. So you can start football season by downloading the app today and using our code PODCASTP to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price picks. Run your game. Welcome back to PODCASTP. Dow, this your segment. What we got for Three Man Weave this week? I love it. As we mentioned last week, every week we're going to take a look at the landscape of sports and entertainment with something that we're calling the three-man weave. So we're going to take a look at topical basketball stories, one non-hoop stories, and then one last story involving the intersection of sports and entertainment. This week's edition of Three-Man Weave is presented by MetaQuest. Expand your world. 
So the first story that we have up is on Bronny James and a message from Mace. Shout out Pastor Mace. Uh, but <laughs> Bronny James recently made his NBA debut, marking the first time in NBA history that a father-son duo has ever happened on an NBA court. So during preseason, Bronny's game was dissected and covered as if he was the number one overall pick, when in reality, he was just the 55th pick in the NBA draft. But the amount of expectations has seemed unfair from the jump. And Mace, shout out to Is What It Is, had an interesting take on Bronny. And I quote, I would say this to Bronny. You got to really look at it like this. It's kill or be killed every night. Get the cornrows. Listen to Uncle Murda, get the cornrows, wear the sleeve, wear number six, change your number right now to number six, and wear the red LeBrons. I'm telling you, just try it one game, try it one game, and prove me wrong. I will, I will pee to read that same thing just in the base voice for me. Just the same thing I'll make Yo, say. yo, <laughs> yo, yo, Cam, Cam. <laughs> Yo, I just would say this to Bronny. You got to really look at it like this. It's kill or be killed. Every yeah. night. Get the cornrows. Listen to Uncle Murder. <laughs> keep going. Nice. I love it. No, no keep it going. Guys, man. Do, it going. You, do, you, do you guys think that it's, it's fair game for Bronny James to, to have this scrutiny? And, and also, once he steps on that floor... Um, he's going to be a target just because of his last name. Just want to get both of your thoughts on on Bronny's first NBA season. I mean, obviously, I think it's fair game. I think um, he shouldn't be protected because he's Bron's son. Um, everybody's going to get criticized. Everybody's going to get, you know, the fact that the matter is, like, yeah, he was a 55th pick, but he's also the son of the best or one of the best players to ever play the game of basketball. And so there's going to be same way he's dealt with the pressure and, and the target on his back through high school. Uh, he's going to deal with that now in the NBA. Um, I do think it's unfair to some degree that you don't allow him to kind of navigate and find himself. You know, this is, this is a kid we're talking about who's trying to find his way in the NBA and trying to live out his dreams and no one starts off starts out perfect at anything. No one looks great at anything, right? Like he's trying to find his way. He's trying to find the NBA game. He's trying to figure this out while doing something that he can say no one has done ever that played before him. No one has played with their father. Like that could be a whole different level of pressure to play with your father. As good as it is to have your dad with you along this journey with you, it's no one can only he can the only person that can speak for that. What that's like to play with your father, if that is pressure because who his father is. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think it's, you know, it, it, it's a tough, I think, tough space for Brownie to be in. I love what I saw that game where he was cooking. It found like he found his rhythm. It found like he was comfortable. He drowned it out the noise. He played like himself. He let the game come to him. And I thought you saw a switch where he just looked comfortable, catch after catch, possession after pos after possession. But you got to allow him to be a kid, man. We we all started off if, if I was the 10th pick. And if you look at what my progression was or if you look at where I was from a talent at 19, 20 years old in the league, I was nowhere near what I look like now. So, like, let right. the kid develop. And, you know, it's cool to have your words and say this, this or that, but to, 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 you know, keep poking at it as if he already doesn't know what level he needs to play at. And, 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 you know, or there's no pressure of what level he needs to play at. He just needs to take one day at a time to get better. That should be the only thing he looks at. How can I get better every day? I agree. Of course, a lot with P says. But for sure, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all right. And then I'm going to just be honest, speaking of what May said, I, I looking at it from a fan's base, you know what I'm saying? Just from our culture, black folks, and what we look at, we look at people for swag and stuff when they play ball, which is stupid. And, mm -hmm. you know, with, with LeBron on the court, uh, Junior, uh, the son, Bronny, when he's on the court, and, you know, not, nothing's wrong with his hair. That's the style that the kids wear. He's doing what the trend is. He's doing what he is. But I can understand when they say, yo, man, put the braids in, 
You know what I'm saying? Put the red shoes on, put the sleeve, mm -hmm. go in there. Even if you couldn't give us that, like, I'm playing like my father today. Or I'm fit, playing like that James is on the back of my, my jersey. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not, Mace isn't saying anything dogging, like saying you're terrible or nothing. He just mm -hmm. saying, give us a, a look to make yourself feel like I look good, you play good. You know what I'm saying? Like Deion Sanders say, the way you look good, you play good. And not to say he should be having his whole intention, I need to look good when I play. It's all about him playing basketball, first of all. But it's just mm -hmm. giving us a look because when we watch him, we watch him sometimes not being a, he, he look like, like he's confused. He's just playing with his hair like he's, I, I know the play. I got to make sure I do it right, this and that. But with the braids, you can't do all that playing with your hair. You look more locked in. Your hair is to the back. I'm zoned in. It's just a more of a different look. So I know Mace isn't saying anything wrong, trying to dog him and be funny. It's just a look. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the look that he has right now, it looks it, to us, it looks like he's nervous. Look like he's not like he's not ready or something. And that and he can be ready. It just looks mm -hmm. like it. So mm -hmm. I, I agree with what both of you guys are saying. And I think Bronny is going to be great in the league. And I think his time is going to come where he shut everybody the fuck up. I think that there's pros and cons. You know, he's in the spotlight. Le he Bronny James didn't choose who his parents were. And I think a lot of times kids in those circumstances, we've seen it. They don't handle the spotlight well. I'm not going to name any names, but. I think we could think of some other high profile NBA people that has sons. And I'm just happy that it looks to me like he's handling it well, like his spirit, his mental, his focus. He seems to be handling it well. And I think I think it's a fair argument that people a, a pro of being Bronny's of LeBron James son is that he's going to get an opportunity and he got his opportunity. Now I'm not saying that's the only reason he's in the NBA, but very fair argument that a pro of being LeBron James son is he's getting his, uh, his shot in the NBA. The con is exactly what we're seeing right now with us talking about him, every platform talking about him. I'm just happy he handles it. Well, PG, mm -hmm. can I ask you a question? What mm -hmm. is, is there a game that you remember where you had, your lowest percentage in every in any and everything rebounds, assists, and points. Do you Absolutely. remember? Absolutely. And, and nobody probably ever talked about it, right? Right. But it didn't stop you from doing what you're doing. It just hurts because because his name is so big. He's in the spotlight. Everything that he does, we're watching. It's like, damn, he, he played for one minute. He played for two minutes. Give the boy a break. He had a cardiac arrest. Right. And he's right, still right, out right. there doing what he's doing. You can't, uh, coach, uh, if, if something happened to this man on the court, it, we looking at it like, let him play. The coach looking at it like, hey, if I keep playing this boy, shit, I can be the person that get in trouble for this. So mm -hmm. people don't even look at it all like that. You don't have terrible games. Nobody talk about it. They only remember it because you're in the spotlight. If he wasn't in the spotlight, all these terrible games that people saying he's having, which is not terrible because he's somewhere somebody else ain't even made it. So I just look at it. Let it let this man be what he going to do. And, and, and let him have fun, man. His mama playing him on a video game. Let it be fun, man. Mm -hmm. Let him do what he do. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't saying that Mace necessarily made comments. I wasn't, I'm saying that people in general, the media in general, jumping on that bad wagon of having negative comments towards Bronny. Um, I do agree that he, what kind of Mace was, I think, alluding to was just having the identity. Right. Having an identity of who Bronny is now. You know what I mean? Instead of, to your point, Jackie, I wouldn't say, you know, looking lost. But to have a look to mm -hmm. himself of like, all right, I'm Bronny James and, you know, this is who I am. This is who the player that you're going to get. And I'm finding my way. Like, I do think yeah. he should have a look. And mm -hmm. identity, because you know he's it's it's gonna it's it's automatically people are gonna the, the next generation are gonna gravitate to him. There, the next generation is already looking up to Brody, and yeah. so he's gonna be the next wave of of stars. You know, whatever his NBA career looks like, he's automatically an influencer and an inspiration to a lot of these kids. So, him having a look in the identity will go a long ways. Agreed. That was spot on. Almost like an alter ego. Like, hey, play into exactly. it. Like people are exactly. people are pinning you to be this person. Like, just go against it. Like almost feed into like go with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, let's let's I, I like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the cornrows, but I like it. <laughs> well, Baldy. let's let's change <laughs> it up. 
And let's talk about somebody, you know, the family of the show. Our boy, he always getting talked about on our show. I don't care how many mm-hmm. times. And he always showing up and he always showing out. But uh, let's talk about our boy Carl Anthony Towns. He was involved in the biggest trade of the summer going from Minnesota to the New York Knicks. And uh, we already know them Knicks fans going crazy and they excited about, about this move. And with so much changing so quickly, Cat explained recently how he found he was being traded. And this is what he said, quote unquote. He said, I didn't get called. Tim told me to my face that I was traded. It, it was just gangster. I, I, I ain't going to lie. He came to my house. I, I, I respected it. Honestly, it, it, it's a tough situation. Regardless of what's going on, what's going to happen, the fact that it happened that way, I got to give him respect. So, fellas, I got to say this, too. That, that was funny as hell. But Kel was also seen recently watching a Timberwolves preseason game doing a Billie Eilish concert. Now, flex. that's the, Big flex. What'd you say? Yeah, he flexed it. He flexed it. And plenty of fans compared it to watching an ex Instagrams page. Now that's <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, what <laughs> when when you switch teams, is it health is it healthier to cut all ties with the ex teammates during the season? P, that's my question to y'all. Yeah, I just gotta ask, was was he trying to impersonate Cat? Was that? Yeah, was that's that what I was person- just gonna say. I was just gonna say, Pete. <laughs> it was can terrible, you, wasn't it? Can you do a cat ter- impersonation? Can you can can you run that back cat voice? Uh, I don't think I you got, got a cat. lot of voices. I, I he don't switches his voice I, up a lot, Pete. <laughs> that's why I was trying to switch it. I don't think I got cat. It you got gangster. cat. I ain't gonna lie. He came to my I house. Think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I respect it. Honestly, it's tough. <laughs> it's a tough situation, regardless of what it, what was going to happen. Now, I don't, I don't know if I got uh, Cat. Yeah, I can't yeah, get yeah. Cat there. Uh, uh, Cat was got a unique. On. That was good. Cat, like Cat got a unique. He got a unique, a unique way. So, answer um, the question, fellas. <laughs> shout out, shout out, shout out our family. Shout out our bro, Cat. Um, shout out, shout out Julius Randall, who is a part of that trade. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well. Shout that's, out to that's, Julius. That's the bro, family of the, the show well. too. No, I talked to Cat after the trade. It was crazy how it went down. Because, you know, my wife called me and she found out before I found out. Because I guess, you know, uh, Kat, Kat, uh, my wife and Kat's girl, Jordan, are very close. And so my wife called me like, hey, did you hear the news? I'm like, news? What what, what happened? And um, she's like, Kat's going to New York. (laughs) Wait, hold on. So I picked the phone up. I called Kat. (laughs) He's like freaking out like, yo, bro, is this real? Like. Is, is I don't know if this is real, so I'm like, bro, it's yeah, it's crazy, but we talked about it. It's hard to say in these situations, right? Because owners can do what they want; they can trade you in a drop of a dime. Um, I think it was great that he actually face to face came to Cat um, and told him. I think that takes a lot of courage and balls from. Uh, owner standpoint, especially a piece as big as Cat, who has been there for so many years and have been a part of those bad Minnesota teams. And now Cat was one of the faces that helped turn that program around. Um, I think definitely was worth the conversation. Um, it's definitely healthy. I don't think it's unhealthy to keep relationships and ties with ex-teammates and Cause it's you know in Cat's situation he was 19, 20 years old when he was mm-hmm. there, so he's right, he's right. established some strong and deep relationships there. You know what I mean? Like that. They go retire. You know, there's people. There. There's yeah. people in Indy that I consider as family. Like you know, every time I'm there, they it's always love and it's always you know they always want the best for me and they're reaching out and um, so he's got some family ties in Minnesota. Um, so I, I think it's definitely healthy to continue to keep those ties and you still want to see what's going on. You're still rooting for that group. And yeah, I mean, I did the same thing. I watched, I think, some highlights from Clippers. I watched, I think James and them were playing one-on-one and I was watching mm-hmm. those guys play one-on-one on YouTube. And um, yeah, you still keep ties on those guys because you, you've you been in the grind with them and you you want to you want them to still succeed. And you but want why are you watching that the program game to do well. at the concert? Yeah. If anything, it's a shot at, at Billy Eilish. Page. Yeah. Like, well, yeah I don't if know, anything, that, that it's a shot at Like, you watch it. I can see, like, the, you, 
you at a concert where you should be watching the concert, but you watching your old team you're not even on. Like, what's what's that all about? Yeah, I can't That's imagine Cat knows the lyrics to Billie Eilish. Yeah, if it was a Drake concert, <laughs> he would have been locked in. Billie Eilish, I think he was just like, yeah, that might have been for for Jordan. You know what I mean? Just like doing his, right. doing his duties and going through the, you know, uh, sure, let's go. How about this yeah. though, Pete? Do you respect? <laughs> How Minnesota GM Tim Connolly handled the breaking news to Cat? Um, yeah and no. I'm gonna keep the conversation I had with Cat confidential because obviously I know more to the story. But you know that's for him to explain and not me. What I liked most about the whole thing was that first preseason game. It was fiery. And you had uh, Divincenzo. I'm always I can't say his name, but Divincenzo. I liked what he I like what he did out there. I I liked every second of it. I don't think it got blown out of proportion, but you know he he was one of the There's, names I think that it wasn't like he didn't headline that trade, and mm-hmm. he 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 had a point to prove. And I, I like mm-hmm. that competitive spirit, and that mm-hmm. that was fun to watch. That was what I took from it. That was fun. He's got to be. He's got to be emotional. He's got to be emotional. I mean, you think about it, bro. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Brunson was phenomenal in last year's playoffs, but DiVincenzo made a name for himself in New York. Like Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, Isaiah uh, Hardestein, like they made names for themselves in New York. Like they made, and that's a tough place to play. Like that's a tough place to be a star in. And I thought they rose to the occasion and became stars in New York. And so I know there was some emotional frustration with being traded from there. You're with your boys. You find a home, you find a fit, um, and you're playing for one of those hard nosed, hard working coaches, right? So, like, I feel like everything aligned with DiVincenzo being in playing for the Knicks, and so I know there's some, you know, there's got to be some resentment towards that trade on his behalf, and going there is it's got to be an anger and an extra, you know, motivation to play well and destroy Knicks every time he can. I get where he's coming from. And uh, like you said, I thought it was great. I thought it's going to be great for basketball when Minnesota plays New York Knicks. I think that's another storyline to follow. All right. And the next story, which is one of one of my favorite stories that kind of took place in the NBA world. But last week we saw one of the best moments uh, I've seen in NBA recently involved rookie Quincy Olivari and Steph Curry. The Lakers played the Warriors to wrap the preseason and there was a shot after the game of of Steph and Olivari chopping it up. And Olivari went to the podium and got really, really emotional, which I think is 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 rare in, in today's NBA, uh, expressing how impactful Curry was to his life and his basketball upbringing. Man, I, it's crazy because uh, I've liked him since I was in like sixth grade. Like, it was, I don't even know what to say, man, because... Like, that's my favorite player ever. And uh, the first thing he told me was, like, I'm a big fan of your game. And, like, truth be told, I'm a big fan of him. You know, like, I I, I had his jersey. He signed it twice. Uh, I used to sleep under that jersey. And, like, I just wanted to be like him so bad. And so just to be able to meet him, he, him be able to have some respect for me, and then us to talk in the back, he gave me a pair of his shoes and signed them. Like, that meant the world to me, man. Like, my dad knows, my mom knows, like, it just means a lot. And, like, I, I, I don't know. It just means a lot. Quincy had 22 points in the game and eventually just secured that two-way contract from the Lakers to close the preseason. So congratulations to that young man. Congratulations. But, P, as, as athletes, do you wish more flowers um, were, were, were given to, to one another in that brotherhood of NBA players, especially since that fraternity is just so small? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think there's a disconnect between eras Mm -hmm. that we don't give each other, give each other enough flowers. Obviously, everyone operated differently in their eras and times were different in their eras. And I think there is definitely a disconnect with players that play before us. They have a disconnection with how the game is now with the players in the league now. Um, and so, you know, it's, I think it's awesome. That moment that moment was awesome. I saw it and 
you know, that's what the league is about. Like, that's what the NBA is about. That's what sports is about. Handing the baton, handing the, you know, the, you know, handing it over to the next generation. Um, I thought it was a candid, genuine moment between Steph and Olivari. Um, and, you know, I think you heard it, the, the whole emotion of what that moment meant to him. Like he probably was thinking about that trip well before that game was played. You know what I mean? If I get a chance just to see Steph, he might not even know he was playing that game or how many minutes he was going to play that game. Mm-hmm. If I get this moment just to see there. Steph Curry, he don't, he might have thought on his calendar in preseason. That game was probably <laughs> circled whether he plays or not. Like I get to see him now on a basketball court. I don't know if he's playing. I don't know if I'm playing, but yet he goes, he scores 22 and finds his way to Steph Curry after the game to share that moment. And Steph already knowing about this kid and being a fan of this kid. So now this kid has something to cherish going away from that moment. And now, you know, you hear the stories of like my idols. I had this interaction with my idol and, you know, this is why you shouldn't, you know, I I forget what the saying is about idols become your rivals idols become your rivals right like you have this moment with your idol with your idol and he fails at that moment of you looking up to him and 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 because he he shuns you off so that was dope man that was that was great for sports i thought that was a beautiful moment (laughs) like how you did did who day from houston (laughs) right what's his day uh so What's the day that we had on our show? Oh, oh, Alperin, Alperin. Alperin, yeah. <laughs> How you did him dirty. He was all looking up to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Olivari. Yeah, remember he went viral mm-hmm. at the picture day when he was in the back and he said what up to LeBron. Everybody was like, who is that? Is he on the team? And then he, of course, ended up balling. And then the story now with Stefan. So that's dope. He making his way, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, shout out the other rookie. Um, I'm again, I'm going to mess his last name up, but Dalton, I think that's Mm -hmm. an interesting story too. You know, that's like an anomaly in itself. That kid can play. If Bronny wasn't there, I'd like to think that he'd might get a little bit more shine than he is. And it just looks like he's handling it like a, a true professional and, and, and just shout out to him because I don't, I don't think that would be, you know, easy for any NBA player, let alone a rookie. Uh, to be dealing with he's a not just pick. Los Angeles, but Bronny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, he's a lot. That's a lot. That, that that can't be easy at all. It's like some of the attention getting taken away from him. P, do you remember the last moment um, that you got truly emotional during an NBA game or just throughout your NBA career? Yeah, when I returned back to play in Indiana, that was an emotional time. I, I cried. You know, there were some tears uh, when I came back to play after breaking my leg in that first game back against Miami Heat. Um, It was definitely emotional. Just everything that I put towards returning, playing for that franchise again, and the crowd giving a standing ovation. And, and, you know, they saw the journey and, and how long of a process that was for me and how grueling and taxing taxing of a process process that was for me. I, I was definitely emotional that night and, um, you know, very appreciative of Indy allowing me to kind of, you know, receive uh, uh, that moment um, of returning to play, man. That was that was that was a beautiful night. So moving on to the NFL, ESPN recently recreated the iconic cover of Randy Moss and Kevin Garnett with Justin Jefferson and Anthony Edwards, two players with a Hall of Fame trajectory in their own rights. First question, did you guys see the video of them mm-hmm. going back and forth? Mm-hmm. Yes, awesome. I've seen it. Edwards, I love hey, Anthony Edwards, ah, yeah. hey, they were hyped. I loved that <laughs> yeah. video. No, nah, that was Anthony that Edwards was a great video. A bit key. It was I great, but Ant- Anthony Edwards had some interesting comments during the interview about his NFL dreams, and I quote, If I win a ring in the next three to four years, I love that he gave himself three to four years. I'm going to play. Yeah, bro. (laughs) I'm going to play football. Me, Bron, and Lou Dort. Cat. We 
oh, could Cap. come play. Cap, Cap, well, t- Lou Dort knows how to tackle. Just kidding, just kidding. It's a joke. He, he knows how to tackle. <laughs> it's a joke, it's a joke. He goes for the but, legs. <laughs> yeah, kidding. Justin, Justin, uh, Justin Jefferson pushed back on that thought, but it, it had me thinking, P. If you're an NFL GM and you have to build a hypothetical five-on-five team of NBA players, give me two wide receivers, one quarterback, and one tight end, but they're NBA players. What's the squad and why? My two receivers, I'm going to go Anthony Edwards. Okay. He is quick, speed, athletic. And and just a bully. Like I think he he's extra physical, and uh, I mean he'll be he'll be a stud, bro. You throw the ball up, and he can go get any jump ball. Man, pick your next bro. pick. I'm gonna go Russell Westbrook as my other receiver. Okay. Ooh, throwing <laughs> Russ in there. Okay. I'm throwing Russ in there. Russ liked that physicality. Uh-huh. He athletic as hell. He got he got hands, and he played football. You know what I mean? Like, I think Russ would be awesome pick on the football the field. the next player. You will hear all that. Shh, don't, don't, rush next player. don't rush yeah, me. Don't rush me, okay? Russell, <laughs> hey, this guy, I want to hear Dow, all the other five. Dow asks, what's the squad and why, okay? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> At tight end, I'm going Braun. Easy. Easy That's a good one. I was about I'm to say going Braun. Okay. Braun is, just throw that shit up. <laughs> okay. Throw that shit up. Nobody covering Braun. You got um, Anthony Edwards and sure at quarterback, I'm gonna go Demar Derozan. That's a sleeper pick. Has anyone seen Demar Derozan throw a football? Nah, I, I would go uh, Google. Go Google Armello. Demar throwing a Magic. Demar can <laughs> fling that motherfucker. I ain't just say I, okay, I, I, I got get uh, throwing I, it from far. I so got. I don't know. I got one curveball for you at QB, and everyone thinks I glazed Drew, but this is true because I went to high school with them. In high school, P. This Drew Holiday. Court, uh, but but why? Why? <laughs> why though? See how you don't even gonna say it. Drew Holiday. Why, why he, would I why would I suggest he that? played quarterback at Campbell Hall? Yeah, but what <laughs> and, and what kind of quarterback was he? He was a scrambling. And and what hand did he throw the football with? He's left handed. But he, he's also right handed. So yeah, this so dude was throw. running plays with throwing the ball with his right hand. And his left hand. Rollouts both ways. He'd be a good quarterback. Okay, that's different. That's different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Drew's that's enough about that. Drew. I'm sorry, Drew. Maybe one day we'll that. get you on the episode, but until then. <laughs> I mean, I feel like at this point, Drew, like, Drew, bro, we got to get you on the show. You got you to gotta look up DeMar throwing a football, bro. I will. He, he can okay. fling that motherfucker. I'm going to look that up. So you got, what, you got, what, you only pick how many I got, I got, I got, Four. I got Anthony Edwards, Russ at receiver, Brian at tight end, DeMar at quarterback. That's four. What about a running back? Let's just throw a running back in there. Let's do an extra, extra. A running we back. Have any running back. A yeah, running take. back. Well, it, see, I would have threw Russ at running back if I had a running back slot. Okay, let's there switch it up then. We'll so you, up. you throw okay, Russ at so let me back. put Russ at let me put Russ at running back and my other receiver. You know what? Let me put Bron at the other receiver and at tight end. I'm gonna go Aaron Gordon. Okay. That that okay. I'm gonna go Aaron Gordon. You know what I mean? I think it's a good good five and six. Uh, you did well. You did well. Who you say your quarterback the was? Debo. He said Debo. Okay, Debo. All right. Debo. And Ru- the tail running back was Russell. He had LeBron at tight end, Anthony Edwards. and Bron, Bron at receiver and, now. Bron at receiver and, and Anthony Edwards at receiver and Anthony, Aaron Gordon at tight end. I'm always entertaining. Let me take y'all to some entertainment news. So, fellas, there's a lot of buzz circulating about Denzel Washington's performance in Gladiator 2 and – Plenty of critics are said that the boy doing his thing so much, he going to be a force at the upcoming Oscars this season. And I just want to know is Denzel, because y'all all know he's one of the greatest actors of all time and has also been involved with some of the greatest sports movies of all time. Like, remember the Titans. He got game and the hurricane. I wasn't in hurricane, but I was in hurricane season. So, <laughs> you know, say, but anyways, fellas, <laughs> I need to know this. He got a lot of them, so come with your come with your thoughts. What was your favorite Denzel Washington story? First of all, I, I just want to say Gladiator is my all time top three maybe movies. I okay. love Gladiator, so the fact that he's in Gladiator two, bro, I cannot wait to watch Gladiator two. Hey, coming I'm in after Russell Crowe. That my favorite Denzel story. 
I actually doubt. Do you remember or did you know his son Malcolm played on one of the pump teams? Daughter went to Campbell Hall as well, too. So I remember both of them. Got it. Okay. So so his yeah. So his son played on one of the pump and run teams. And I actually went to one of these practices where his son was on. And uh I practiced for a little bit of that practice because I showed up late, but we got there and it's like this little gym and I don't know, I can't remember if it was the valley or or if it was in some outskirt part of LA, but we go inside this little hole in the wall gym. It was like some weird side street shit. And I go into the gym, I'm with my parents and, uh, you know, we get into the gym, we look around and we, we see Denzel and it was like the situation of like, like no ways Denzel's in this little ass gym. Mm -hmm. Like that can't be Denzel. Like now, now that's what I'm thinking. Like, no, he wouldn't be here. Like that's not Denzel. And so we get closer, get closer. And I'm like, yo, that is Denzel. And I'm a kid. I'm 14, 15, maybe 16 years old. Like I'm young. And um, I can't, I, I remember I just couldn't stop like looking over. Like, is that real? Like then my parents were like fanned out. Like, yo, that's Denzel. Like, and so long story short, I got a chance to like talk to him and just introduce myself or say what's up to him and how, you know, I was speechless. Like I didn't, I don't even know if words came out, um, but I was able to like be in his presence. Nothing but great things, man. He was, he was cool. He was like one of the, one of the homies. He was like a regular dude, like very approachable. Uh, you know, it wasn't like he was big time or too big for us. Like he was gracious. He, I think my parents got a chance to say hello or say hi to him. Um, and he was just cool, man. He was just normal, man. And it was a really cool experience for me at, at that time. So I was already a fan of his, but to have that interaction and be like, man, that like, he was a, like, he killed it. Like for me being there, he knocked it out of the park for my first, yeah. you know, first time meeting him. He knocked it out of the park. So I'm a fan of his forever. Did yeah. you got some I, I, impressions? Shit. Well, let, 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 Dow, let's hear some, Dow, what's your story first? Let's hear Dow's story. Um, I story. mean, I just, I, when I think about Denzel Washington, I think of a few things, but he just seems like a good guy. I mean, there's countless stories. Number one, he's outspoken about his faith. I personally like that. Um, you hear stories all the time about how he's helped other people. I believe that he was played a huge role in uh, Omari Hardwick, the guy that played ghost and power ghost. and kind of helped him mm -hmm. uh start his career and so for me th those would be a couple of the things he just seems like he has a, a genuine heart to help other people and and i'm a fan of that type of person yeah and i thought he delivered one of the like most beautiful speeches that he delivered yep. for that college graduation oh that was a dope dope and, and and you know to piggyback or to take it further than that like he's done some some interviews where he's like drop gems and he's just like so unapologetically himself. And man, it's just everything. I feel like every word that comes out of his mouth is just like, you know, golden. He said in this, in this movie gladiator, he said, this is the, the, the biggest production, the biggest movie that he ever did in his life. He really? Said. Yeah. So I want to know, like, this I, like, I can ask, crazy. ask him one day, like what, What's, I mean, we done seen a thousand movies from Denzel. And he talking about this is yeah, the biggest. I the wonder biggest what, why is this the biggest? But I can't wait to see it because, you know, I'm a Have you got a chance to meet him? I, I ran into him and met him a couple of times at parties. And I always, I'm just going to be honest, looking at Denzel and seeing Denzel, somebody that you look up to and you want to follow his footsteps and be the next Denzel. It was so just a, a, a nerve wrecking man just like I was so nervous like just mm -hmm. to just see this man and like you know you, it's like it, when you see an NBA player a football player or just anybody you're like damn that's them they did all this but to see an actor that you look up to and in your mind you you only can think I want to work with this guy and hopefully that can happen one day but just seeing him in your presence like you at the same party with this guy in your mind it just gives you a little I'm getting close. I'm going I'm to get there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was like a motivation thing and a scare. Like I was nervous. I was young and it was just like, is he going to be a mean guy? Is he going to be a nice guy? But every time I've seen him and ran into him, he's always was talking great and he's funny. He cuss a lot. 
You know what I'm saying? And he don't care. Mm -hmm. He don't care who's around. He just is he didn't zail. I've learned that he was more of a great actor when I seen who he really was as a person. So it was like seeing his roles. It's like, damn, he ain't even like that in person. You know what I'm saying? He really went into character and became this person. So, you know, for, for life, I'm going to always follow his footsteps. And hopefully one day I can be the next Denzel. So that, that I, I, I'm, I'm always on his, on his books, man. I, I got one question to ask, like from an actor's perspective and an actor's standpoint, like what is the one thing that like separates Denzel? I would, oh man. His the, the roles, I would say he's Cause taking because his roles, his his range is wide. He knows different languages. He he mm-hmm. does roles where he speaks different languages. It's like it's so much that this man does that can that impresses you. It's like it's never a dull moment where you can say, you know, why did Denzel do this movie? You might have, of course, some people are gonna say two or three movies that, oh, why that was terrible. But there's nothing that I don't think from any movie Denzel have done, I, I, there's nothing that I haven't learned from him, you know what I'm saying, as mm-hmm. an actor. And I think every le- every role that he he takes, is, it's, a, it's another stepping stone that he's doing as a challenge, you know, something mm-hmm. that he's never done in his career. Like Gladiator, he's never done this. And I know some people in, in, in the world that I'm in, they always be like, uh, some of the older people, they don't believe like he's older now. He can't, he can't do that. And this and that it, watch he's the still movie. Robert McCall. He, you, you see what, you know he's, what I'm saying? He's still so, Robert McCall <laughs> all day. So <laughs> it's like, I just love the, in the world of, of acting that you get to portray so many different type of, of, of roles and, and characters in the world. And Denzel has shown us every range and every stage of being, being somebody, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I I will always give this man all my 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 glory and love to him, man, because he's he's phenomenal, and I can't wait to work with him. So mm-hmm. there you have it. Shout out the goat. Hey fellas, that was another great three man weave in the books. That was dope. Dal, appreciate that segment. We'll be right back after this break. Joined by our guy AJ Debanza. Keep it locked. In. To kick off season three of Pod P, we're excited to announce one of our newest sponsors, MetaQuest. MetaQuest is the most powerful mixed reality headsets that let you do everything you love in totally new ways, whether that's watching movies, gaming, working out, or hanging with friends. Meta recently sent us some Meta headsets, and we've been having a blast trying all of the awesome experiences. Over the next couple months, we're going to be sharing our favorites with y'all on the show. I've definitely missed being on the game with y'all since P's moved to Philadelphia, but luckily, MetaQuest has been able to fill that void. That's right. This week, we're sticking with the scary vibes. Our friends at MetaQuest know P's a serious gamer, so they hooked him up with the early look at Metro Awakening VR. Metro Awakening is a new post-apocalyptic survival horror and first-person shooter game set in the Moscow subways in the aftermath of a nuclear Armageddon. The game drops next week, November 7th. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I got to pull the strap out, put the clip in. I was pow, pow, pow. You know what I mean? I was <laughs> I was getting it in. <laughs> Y'all play it yet? Y'all liked it? I like the training that it, it puts you through where you got to go through the like the box shape mm-hmm. and you got to go through there. Mm-hmm. Just go, my, I see that mother. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Do yeah. all that. I love yeah. it. I love it. I, I've been yeah. having fun with it. Yeah, it was a it was a blast. If you guys want to have that same amount of fun and experience we've had, head to meta.com slash quest to pre-order Metro Awakening and see everything else that's possible with MetaQuest. Fellas, when it comes to wings, what are your non-negotiables? Dude, I said it last week. I need that garlic parmesan flavor, but I forgot to mention I gotta have ranch dressing as well with my chicken wings. Man, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I just got to get all plain so I can try all the flavors. Ain't nothing better than dipping in all level. Mm, I like that. Listen, football season is here. Basketball season is here. And there's no better place to catch all the action while eating good than at Buffalo Wild Wings. B-Dubs has wall-to-wall TV so you don't miss any of the regular season highlights. And most importantly, they have an offer that's tough to pass up. That's right, P. With Buffalo Wild Wings Go, you can get 20 boneless wings, a large fry, and four dips. 
for only $16.99. And you can choose up to four sauces, which means you can get an Asian zing and a honey barbecue and a mango habanero and my favorite, lemon pepper. Ah, fellas, with all that said, what y'all choosing? Hey, you know I'm going lemon pepper. If I got to pick between the four, Jackie, I'm going to go with the honey barbecue. I actually ordered them last week. Ooh, I was going to tell you, Dallas. I was going to sneak up in there and say the same thing with that honey barbecue. It's different. Get that honey barbecue. Mix it with that lemon pepper. 20 boneless wings and fries for $16.99 also means there will be plenty of food for me and my two friends like Paul and Jackie. Plus, it's all you can eat from your couch when you get takeout or delivery from Buffalo Wild Wings Go all season long. So order 20 boneless wings, a large fry, and four dips for only $16.99 with Buffalo Wild Wings Go. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P. I previewed this at the top of the show. It's only right that we got a future star in the NBA on the way on the pod and bless Podcast P family. Hey, this person right here is a little bro of mine, uh, extremely talented. And uh, like I said, he's going to be a special talent to come in, in, in the NBA. Welcome to Podcast P, the number one player in the nation, AJ DeBanza. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, little bro. Come on, bro. AJ. What's Gee, up, kid? We, we little bro, bro to him. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you old, you old little bro. You know, feel me? I'll be there. You know, hey, hey, AJ about to take over. Shit. Jackie and Uncle. Let's let's keep it about. Yeah, he, uh, He's an he, uh, uncle. I, I like that. I like I heard, that. I heard, I, your, I, heard, I heard your birthday's in like two days. No, it's tomorrow, Ooh. AJ. It's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> you turn to Jerry West. AJ, can I ask you one thing? Watch this. Have you ever seen a 43 look like this, though? They don't make them like this. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> See what I'm saying? All healthy and chocolate up. That's all I'm saying, man. So you already know what it is. Shit. That's uh, all. <laughs> you're funny. Where you at, AJ? Look like you're in a classroom, big dog. Yeah, I'm at school. I'm in Utah. Utah prep. Uh, came from class. I had a little workout. He just come out the sauna or something. Got the towel on him. Now I just had a little workout. Oh, Gotta okay. get your workout. Hey, work out. He, we grinding, bro. Gotta come get on, your we workout. grinding. You feel me? Hey, but listen, let's jump right into this. We don't want to take up too much of your time. Drew League, we all know, is a staple of the L.A. community. We've seen so many great players on that, that stage and that court and platform just show love to the city. You played at 16 and won MVP against grown men, which is very impressive. What was the backstory behind playing in the Drew League last year? I mean, it was, just, it was a crazy experience. I mean... You get offered to play in the Drew League. Like, yo, you want to play in the Drew League? I'm not about to say no. Right. So, I mean, I went in there and played before the game. Like, I was mic'd up during the game. So, I mean, if you go watch that, you'll hear, like, yo, like, I mean, I got to come kill. Yeah. And I was, you know, I hit my first bucket. I was like, it's over. Like, I'm about to get crazy. Like, it was yeah. my first bucket. It was like a dunk. I was like, yeah, it's over. So, I mean, grown men, like, I'm not really worried about the age gap no more. I mean, I've been playing up all my life. So, I mean, I mean, if I'm trying to get to the NBA, I'm like playing against, you know, LeBron's about to be 40. I mean, age gap not gonna really matter. I just, you know, it's just more physical. That's why I really learned about it. But I mean, just getting stronger. But I mean, I came out, I played my game, and you know, I got twenty points, one MVP, and it was a great feeling. How many other like pro ams have you played in? That was the only pro am, but I've played in um, NBA runs. Anything you took away from it was you like, dang, like these LA dudes, like some of these LA dudes is nice, or was Bro, it yeah, like, man, like, this is light? Nah, it wasn't <laughs> light. It wasn't light. <laughs> but like, I mean, you you play against some pros that like aren't all stars, and you're like, yo, the NBA is hard, like. Yeah. Even guys that's not even in the rotation, like playing major minutes, are still bucket getters. They're still playing right. defense. Right. So I mean, you just can't kids hang out for granted. And also this this summer, you you had an amazing summer, bro. This summer you won a gold medal with the FIBA 17U in Turkey. Congrats to that. Appreciate it. Back to back. Back to back. Back to back. Oh, two times. He had the clown. Two times. Do it again. Two times. <laughs> time. He two. He two goals. Do two goals. What was that experience like, bro? USA is just a blessing. I mean, everybody want to represent their country. So, I mean, me making it last year was like, I was a little nervous. I'm like, I got to I gotta make one of 12. I got to be one of the best 12 here. And then coming back, I was kind of a, not a veteran, but I knew I knew the standards. So, I mean, I, I did that again this year. And this year was in Turkey. So, we played uh, the World Cup. A little harder competition. But, I mean, our group of guys was so locked in. We wasn't, we was playing together. We was unselfish and we ended up breaking. We broke up. We broke a couple records. Couple yeah. records. So now you you got a chance front and center to see some 
some of the talent that we might not have heard about or, or we might not have seen like playing over there and playing mm-hmm. some of the 17 you uh you know kids over there like is there anybody that like wowed you oh man this dude is gonna be pretty good there was a couple guys from different countries like that's what I really learned about overseas guys. Like, they're, the way they slow that game down is crazy. Like, USA, you want to play fast. So that's how we really won right. by playing fast. But they coming off them ball screens. You better you better come off that ball screen right before he going to hit you with a no-look pass. Right, He's going right. to hit you with a skip pass. So there's a lot of guys from the France team, a lot of guys from the Italy team that was really showing up. Yeah, yeah. You talk about the fundamentals, man. Like, it's a reason why Luca came over here and just yeah. splashed and made noise immediately just because of the advance how advanced it is for those guys to pick the game up. I do want to talk about 2028 Olympics to be here in LA. You have any, is that like a marker on your checklist or a goal on your check box that you want to check off being on that team? Yes. No question. Like, <laughs> yeah. I say do it. I, won, I say do I won, it. I won two gold medals. Um, I'm probably going to play again next year for U19s. Hopefully win three. I mean, those those are gold medals, but you want to feel that real gold. So, I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, hopefully I'll be two years in the league. And then, I mean, hopefully just winning a gold medal, that will just be like, I mean, that will just really like, you know, yeah. start the career off. I think it only makes sense, right? From yeah. where your trajectory is and where you're headed, you'd definitely be in the league by then. You'll probably be a franchise player, corner piece by then. It's only right Grant Hill partners with you in this and yeah. growing USA basketball and taking it to a next level, starting with you, whoever else the young guys is in the league. But I think yeah. definitely you got to be a peer. You got to be a part of that. I want to be. If, I told if, I told people too. I was like, I don't care if I'm the last dude on the bench. I need me a gold. <laughs> I do not care. I'll clap. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're, you're Jason Tatum it? I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. And he handled it well. So. He handled it. Hey, big shout out to JT, man. I know that is well. tough, bro. I, I know that is tough. I wasn't making a joke about him, but more so what he had to persevere through because that is very tough. And I don't think he gets enough credit for how he yeah. professionally handled that. After just winning a championship. After just yeah. winning the chip, being the face of 2K, face of a magazine. Like, it's I'm up, bro. Like, Stop hating on me. In a uh, reality show, everything. Mm-hmm. And then it was crazy. He was the only all NBA, like first team all NBA nod, I think, too. And he still didn't like. Yeah. Imagine winning finals MVP. That might even be crazier than the Tatum. Thing. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? That, that, that might even be crazier. But AJ, uh, we recently saw a photo or a picture. I think there was a video, too, of you working out with PG this summer. But last year was actually your first experience of working alongside P. And I just want to know what that initial workout uh, with P was like and, and the experience for you. Me, I'm a big film guy. So I watch a lot of film, a lot of different players that I think I could take, you know, parts of their game from. And, you know, Paul George is just one of them. So me being able to work out with him, I was really seeing, like, because he plays my position. So I'm like, I'm learning from one of the best in my position of all time. And I really get to see how he works out, what he works on. So that's – and. I'm going to say it like my my warm up routine, I stole some of the stuff from that workout. So, I mean, it's just stuff like that, like just learning how to get lower, learning how to play with more pace, learning advantages while being tall was just great. And then this past summer at uh, Peace Jam, we worked out, uh, me, him, and Kyan, uh, we worked out at uh, the Peace Jam. And it was just more the same. He's seen our improvement, but we're still, you know, critiquing a little stuff that was that was wrong. So, so with that said, AJ, you you done played with, of course, PG, LeBron, not to mention even KD, CP, of course. I just want to know, how would you describe the difference in each workout from the iconic players you've trained with? There's a lot of differences because you have, you have guys like uh, Chris Paul, who's not a 6'9", tall, athletic, just I'm going to just rise over you. He manipulates the game in so many different ways, which I learned. Like he's talking about, he's uh, he's setting the screen. Oh no, the other dude's setting the screen. And he's telling the offensive player, he's telling the defensive player to switch. Like you just he's talking about, you got to know your guy's voice. He's dribbling the ball so hard, he's not losing the ball. But then you guys like LeBron, who does a little bit of everything in his workouts, and then you have guys like KD that's simplifying his workouts. I'm just gonna work on two dribble pull ups for the whole time because I'm seven foot. I'm gonna just rise up over you. I don't gotta do too many moves. But it was I like I like taking a lot uh, from different different people's game. 
So your most comparison person is PG, you say? Yeah, I get a lot of Paul George and I got a lot of T-Mac now. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, hey, that's PG's mm-hmm. favorite player. <laughs> I got a lot of T-Mac now. So um, me and my trainer actually went, watched the Orlando T-Mac film. And they can see, they can see the little bounce in the step. Yeah. Did, did, nice can I ask you one more thing? Did any any of them players that you played up against from Bron, KD, and UPG, see, did they did they learn anything from you? You think? Nah. Uh, nah. <laughs> they they. Nah. I, I don't I don't play like them, and, and like we don't. You know what I mean? Bron got his own set way of playing. Uh, everybody got their own set way of playing. Yeah, they, everybody has their own play style. Yeah. I mean, they might play the same position, but different skills like. LeBron's going to be the biggest out of this three. Mm-hmm. Paul's going to be the most elusive out of the three. Like, it's just different different play styles. P, hey, I want to know, have you guys, you know, you've worked out twice with each other, it sounds like, one time this year, one time last year. Did you, P, I, I, did you get to guard AJ in any of these runs? I know you've had uh, several opportunities over the last several years where you've had some of the young guys come in. I remember when Jalen Green was coming down to Village Christian. And you guys were doing the runs. I want to know if he's if you've got the opportunity to guard him, and what was that like. But more importantly, if you were going to give him some constructive criticism on what you see in his game, because no one has a perfect overall game, what would you say is something maybe AJ could work on that you saw during that time? When we work out, it wasn't runs. It was you know one on one, you know kind of drill skill work. But I think one of the things we were trying to work on was just because he's he's got all the tools. He's explosive. He's bouncy. He's quick first step. Balls on the string. Like I think one of the things, and he mentioned it a little bit, was just staying a little playing lower, learning how to play a little lower. That was the only thing that I could really nitpick on is being crisp with being lower to the ground and, um, you know, because at the next level, you know, for us, we got to handle the ball so much. Defenders get craftier. Defenders get smarter. They get tricker, trickier. Like you got to face a Drew Holiday. You got to face a, a Chris Paul. You got to face a Marcus Smart. Like the the shorter guards, the the the, the smaller guards, and you got to learn how to play in crowds with when you're at their their advantage. So how do you make it towards your advantage? And so that was really what I was trying to you know really pull out in these workouts was you know just playing a little bit you know, lower to the ground and being effective with your dribbles. And uh, at the same time, using your body, like use that big frame to to kind of take up space and, and and own your space. So that was just, uh, I would say, the only areas to critique. But everything else, uh, he he got it. Sky's the limit for AJ. He know that. So you guys did run some ones? No, nah, we didn't play no, the ones. We didn't okay, play. okay, okay. We should have, uh, but we didn't. We should have. We should have. I, I had games, so... Yeah, they they yeah. was there for for Peach Jam, so you know I'm I'm not gonna wear the little the, the young guys out, man. I mean, wear okay, wear the, okay. the, the little homies out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I was hoping. Yeah, okay. The energy, okay. I would have wore y'all out. Oh. Uh, facts, <laughs> facts. <laughs> I would have been gassed the next day. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they trying to impress y'all for sure. Uh, so AJ, you started. Damn, started. Varsity as an eighth grader in your time in Brockton, what was the earliest memory of you kind of knowing I'm special at basketball? Well, when I reclassed, I did eighth grade twice. So my first eighth grade year, that's when I started getting the potential buzz. AJ's potential is this and that. And then my dad was like, yo, you're not doing nothing. Potential is just what you can be. You haven't done nothing yet. And I'm in there like, bro, like, I'm having 20 points one game. He's like, and then the next game, you're having three points. Like, you're inconsistent. Like, you know, get all your stuff. So I said, I bet. So I reclassed, went crazy. I went to a lot of camps, worked out a lot. And I started seeing it. There was, starting, there was a couple flashes. And then I played uh, varsity as an uh, eighth grader, a couple inconsistent games. Now I went to high school. Then I started, started getting over with. It started picking up way faster than what it was supposed to be. And I just kept working out, kept watching film. And then now, I mean, people just say I can't be this. But, I mean, I just try to say in the moment. But, I mean, obviously, I know I have a talent. It's just about maximizing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I will say, like, I heard about you during your freshman year. 
And it was it was exactly that. Like, have you heard of this AJ kid? And I was like, no. Nah. So I, I, I peeped game, watched some tape. And then by the sophomore year, it was like, yo, you got to see this kid, AJ. Like, <laughs> you got to see him. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's when I was like really invested on like, all right, well, we, we got to connect. Like, Get me in touch with this kid. And I think I saw you. So that was right when Drew League happened. Okay. Right right before sophomore year, because I, I ended up reclassing back up and skipping, skipping my sophomore year. So I just did my junior year. Okay. So that's yeah, right, I think the right first time you. I saw you was, uh, what was that? What, that was in Dallas. Yep. Right? I yeah. think I was talking with. Uh, you were talking with Jamari Phillips. With Jamari. I was talking yeah. with Jamari. And, and I was like, God damn. Like that was, I, I've, I've seen you and watched tape on you, but I was like, damn, this kid is, I think you was, that was your sophomore or freshman year. Yeah, that was my, that was my freshman year. That was your sophomore or freshman summer. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, this kid is humongous. <laughs> like this kid is, he was like my height, bro. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? And so, That's yeah, it, it, it's, and then when I watched the tapes and I watched the film on him, I'm like, yeah, he's special. He's like, he got it. So I had, I had to get that work in with you. AJ, just a quick follow-up question with that. So you said that you got held, you did eighth grade twice. I know that's, fun fact, I actually was held back in eighth grade. See, but now it's... Did you get held back because of your grades? No. Reclassify. Are we, are we, are we changing the say, term? I did not get held back. I reclassed. Let's fix that. Okay. <laughs> you say, there we go. Because held back is like, you know, your grades is wrong. You didn't pass. I passed. Okay. okay. I get good grades. I just reclassified because I wasn't ready for high school yet. If you watched me in eighth grade, I was lengthy armed. I couldn't really, I wasn't really filled out, but then I reclassed and really started, that's when I got a strength coach, started working on my body. And then I felt like I was ready, so I, so I reclassified. Fair enough, fair enough. Dallas dumbass, <laughs> he, he had well, some. Speaking of, <laughs> of, in eighth grade, well, speaking of re- dumbass got held back. <laughs> well, speaking of reclassing, AJ, can you give us the game on your decision to reclassify into the 2025 class, what went into that like whole decision making? Well, that was the plan when I reclassed, you know, back down. I mean, I'm of age of 2025, but this is my original class. I was like, I just wasn't ready to play with these guys yet. And then, I mean, once I grew into my body, once I got a strength coach, I was like, I'm ready to go back up. So if you were ready to play with those guys, do you think that you wouldn't have reclassified? Because my point was, it's like a popular thing now. I think as the years have gone on in high school basketball, you got kids reclassifying, getting held back, whichever way you want to call it. And there's a big debate if it's something that actually helps them. Sometimes there's circumstances where they don't feel they're ready. Maybe it's a maturity issue. But then there's also, you know, having that extra year and then going into high school. And then by the time you're a senior, you are the big dog. You're playing against everyone that's younger for you. I- I'm just curious on your debate. Like, do you think it's a case by case on whether someone should reclassify or or not? I think it's by the player. Because me, my two biggest thing is like body-wise and confidence-wise. Because the reason why I was inconsistent because I wasn't really confident in my abilities. So once I got an extra year of work, it was like, yeah, I'm ready. Like, I can go hoop with anybody. Because that made hoops circuit. Like, when I played eighth grade, I won it because I had confidence. And I was like, yeah, I can play high school. Love that. I want to pivot a little bit to uh, uh, something, you know, in Feel free to talk about it if you want, if you don't understand. But we want to talk about the late, great Terrence uh, Clark. God rest his soul. Yeah. From Massachusetts, same, same you know, part of town as you. When you think back on a relationship with him, like what is a moment um, that is like super close and dear to your heart that you always cherish? Well, me and him... We were never really close because when I started coming up, he was at Brewster, so he wasn't Brewster even in town. Okay. So he was um, boarding over there, and then when he came back home, he would. What's, you know, what's talk that? To the my teams. bad for for uh, interrupting. What's the age gap? He was three years, I think. When I was no, he might have been older. He was twenty twenty. Okay. Okay. So how old is he when you graduate? You're so 19. He's about five years older than you. Yeah, so five. Yeah. But yeah, we were never really close. But I mean, I remember one time he came back with, um, it was me, him, and Alexis Reyes. Came back, we worked out, and then we ended up playing once. He fried me. Like, it was bad. Like, it was bad. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. think I scored. But like, I remember that, like, it was just like, this is who you look, this is who all the Boston kids look up to. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm in the gym with him. 
and I'm playing with him. I'm like in seventh, sixth grade. So mm-hmm. I mean, that was a that was a fun time. But I mean, if it wasn't for the incident, I think he would have been great star in the NBA. Mm-hmm. He would have done what he had to do. He was he was for sure a role model for Boston. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I I got to learn a little bit about him through uh, Brandon Boston. I know Brandon was pretty close with him, um, and so he would you know tell me a lot about him and just what kind of kid he was. Um, but from your perspective, like what, how good was he from your perspective? I mean, everybody says we play alike. I don't see it. His mom doesn't see it. I just think it's because we play for the same program and mm-hmm. we had the same hairstyle. And then that was really what it is. But I mean, <laughs> he was not like, he was really the first big guards out of Boston. Like mm-hmm. I'm six, seven, I'm dribbling. I'm shooting over you. Like, so all like all the lengthy kids was like, yo, like, we got we to gotta be like him. So, I mean, mm-hmm. he was special, though. Like, he would come play Brewster. We would come watch his home games. He would just be frying, like, average of 20. So, he was special for sure. I know some of the college programs on your list aren't traditional blue bloods in basketball space, whether it's Auburn, Kansas State. When you're evalu- evaluating these programs, what attracts you to the situation that people may not think that a blue chip player like you would be attracted to? I mean, everybody go think, yo, you should have the four or five blue bloods in there. But I mean, I have me and my family have pillars. Like we need a family orientated school. I need a coach that's not going to sugarcoat. I need the f- best and fastest development plan. I'm trying to be a one and done. I need a win- winning winning orga- organization. And then I'm I just picked the best seven schools that I think fit that. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying the other schools didn't have it. I just think those are the best seven. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody go look at it like, oh, some team was had a better record than this. I mean. I think I could play anywhere. I think my play style, I'm unselfish. I could play with anybody. So, I mean, like, it's not really going to matter because I could think mm-hmm. I could fit in. But, I mean, mm-hmm. like, I'm just, I'm just trying to choose a school that's best for me. Is any of these plans, are you keeping in mind of, like, I'm hitting up so-and-so, let's go play here or let's go play there? Or is this solely based on AJ, AJ's decision and that's it? Well, I mean, we all kids. We all talked about teaming up. Not gonna sit here and be like, I didn't talk to nobody about teaming up. We all talked about teaming yeah. up, but I mean, it's basically they have their own decision what's best for them, and I have my own decision what's best for me and my family. If mm-hmm. it happens to come together, we go hoop and we go try to win. But I mean, mm-hmm. I'm basically going off of myself though, me and my family. Okay. Well, I, I seen you at some of them college football games, and it looked like you was having the time <laughs> of your life. I definitely see now you was at one college over there, like it, they was popping at you so much, you had to take your phone out. You didn't know what to do. You was like, this what fame gonna be like. It was I gotta lit. Show the huh? homies this. Yeah. He was lit. I seen him. I seen him. But anyway, yeah. I got to know since you've been, you know, visiting all them schools, what's been the best vibe so far? Tell me, AJ. Well, not every visit I've been on had a football game because some schools were away. So I've only been to the video you're talking about is Kansas State. I, I went to a BYU okay. football game. I went to an Alabama football game versus Georgia. Mm-hmm. And that was crazy. I know that one had to be crazy for that sure. That's an NFL game. Yeah. <laughs> they had President <laughs> Georgia. They had President Trump there. Oh, the did you mean? The stadium was packed. No, he was in a suite. This man okay. got this man, they he they they got Trump at the game for Just his for recruiting. Him. Yeah, for <laughs> his recruiting. <That's> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it was, that was a crazy vibe. I mean, I've I've been a fan of football. I used to play football when I was younger. But mm-hmm. I've never been inside no crazy. I mean, feel like that. That was, that was crazy. It was at Bama. At Bama, yeah. Bama's like what a hundred thousand, ninety thousand. That was a that's a big that's a big game too. I want to know what it's like. I think not many people get to experience being the number one player in the country in their class. You get to go to some football games. Is there anything else that you could share with the audience, maybe on like what it's like to be recruited from? what I would assume is every college in the country. Like, that's got to be a lot. You're young. You're probably getting letters, phone calls. And recruitment has changed, P, from from back in the day when when we were going into college. Like, what is that like, AJ, with every school in the world wanting you to come to their university? Before I narrowed my list down, my dad had talked to all the coaches. I didn't. I had, what, 35 offers. I did not talk to one of them. Okay. I had him handle that. I'm like, I'm about to go hoop. But I'm not trying to answer 35 calls respectfully. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to 35 visits. And then <laughs> when it was the time to narrow it down, I talked to some coaches over his phone. And we picked the best seven. And now I have their numbers so I can try to build a relationship with the coaches I'm going to most likely play for. But I mean, like, I mean, it's just a blessing. I mean, getting recruited by one college, like, 
because my parents' goal is always not to pay for college. And that was like mm-hmm. the biggest thing for me. Like they don't got to pay no more, like mm-hmm. free education. Obviously, I got bigger aspirations, but I mean, that was big for them. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's just a blessing. I just don't take it for granted. But with me, it was, I kind of had the easier route because I didn't really talk to no coaches. It wasn't really hectic for me. I was just hoping. Mm-hmm. Mama and them not finna pay for a damn thing ever not again. A damn thing. <laughs> Shout out pops, man. Shout out fathers being fathers, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Stepping Shout up, making pops. sure Shout you don't got to worry about nothing. Just hoop, son. Uh, I'll handle uh, the rest. Man. AJ, do you carry uh, maybe a chip on your shoulder when many of the top ranked players in your class come from NBA backgrounds with their fathers? Do you view that as like extra motivation, especially you know, being a first generation of your family that's going to be in the NBA and on the brink of generational success? I wouldn't say I use it as motivation just because their father's in the league. I just want to win. I'm just trying to make it to the NBA. I'm just trying to be the best player I can be. It's not just, I'm not going at you just because you're an NBA son. I'm going at you if you're on the basketball court. That's mm-hmm. what it is. I mean, no, it's not really extra motivation. I have my own motivation built up just to make it to the NBA and go perform in the NBA. And I'm not there mm-hmm. yet, so I got to keep going. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. I, I want to talk about in January, you signed your NIL deal with Nike. What was that process like? I mean, it was big. Uh, they brought it to my attention, me and my dad. And it was like, yo, it's Nike, like, opportunity like this. You you were signed. Like, my favorite players are signing Nike. And I was like, I mean, I got to. I got to sign mm-hmm. it Nike. Got to be a part of that family. Yeah. Have you already, you know, already maybe thought about maybe a signature shoe or what that would look like? I never thought about what it would look like, but I definitely thought about having one. I know some colorways in mind already. You thought about sending me a pair too as soon as they come out? <laughs> you, thought of, you thought of that, right? Okay. Just making sure of that. <laughs> so you already got some storytelling with, with colorways? Uh, yeah, I already got some colorways. Okay. Damn. <laughs> Hey, he's a he had no schedule. Idea. He had I had no schedule, idea what the shoes going to look like, but I have some colorways, yeah. Yeah, he had a schedule. I mean, when I was coming up, I, I definitely used to draw, like, Nike sneakers, bro. I used to draw, like, sketches of what I wanted my shoe to look like. I can't draw. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's all here, though. Just it make is. it on the NBA 2K <laughs> game and take a picture and tell them you want this shoe right there. Oh, you Jackie. can do that on 2K, right? Jackie, yeah. You do do don't play 2K. 2K. But I, oh, I, I didn't say play. play. I didn't say play. What's the point, of, get, what's play? The point of getting on the game just to make a shoe? Because you could take the picture and send it to him. <laughs> Shit. Boy. Hey, what if he was on 2K just for the 2K shoe yeah, creator just, mode? Just to make the shoe, man. <laughs> Anyways, with all that said, AJ, when you look ahead to the NBA, what would you say is the thing you're most excited about? Most excited about? I'm thinking big Hall of Fame. Once Hall of Fame is my only goal. Like once you're a Hall of Famer, you're certified. Like you're certified. So I mean, that's my ultimate goal. I mean, I'm looking forward for it all. I'm looking forward for the first game, my last game, first All Star, first championship, first everything. But Hall of Famer is that goal. Mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. That's big. You want that jacket? That jacket. Definitely, definitely need that enshrinement. <laughs> you feel like so if if it was all said and done and you entered the draft right now as a number one high schooler. Do you feel like your number one pick worthy? Yeah, I bet on myself. Yeah. Bet on yourself. Cooper Flag's in there. Ace Bailey is in there. AJ DeBonza is in there. I'm going number one. Yeah. I always bet on yourself, bro. Okay. I love that. I love that. That's a hell of a one, two, three punch, though, in the draft. Crazy pun. You forgetting some guys, too. Uh, facts. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying yeah. as far as like. I, I think y'all all that next wing, big wings, like yeah. I was classifying y'all as the next big wings. Um, it, that, that, that draft would be insane. Yeah. It's amazing how the drafts are so different. I think we even discussed it uh, last season, AJ, how after Wimby, it just wasn't really a, a super hyped draft class outside of that one anomaly. But to me, when I look at the draft class coming up here, that, we're getting a lot more mix of guys and, and so forth. So it's going to be interesting how it pans out. It is going to be interesting. Yeah. I think this will be a strong draft this year. Yeah, they got some guys. It's, it's definitely some pieces in this, this upcoming draft. So, AJ, before we wrap with you, last week we introduced this segment called Chat PGT. This segment of Chat PGT presented by Buffalo Wild Wings Go. 
Order for takeout and delivery today. And in this segment, we're going to quiz you and PG on your respective careers and see who gets the correct answer. You or chat GPT. So the first question, AJ, I want you to finish this sentence for me. AJ is the best high school prospect since... That's tough. Because <laughs> then, because you had AJ, because you had last year Coop, Dylan, Ace, and years before that you had Paulo, Aunt Edwards, Tatum. Mm. Hey, Zion. Count on yourself. Count on yourself. Let's hear it. Li- I love it. But I'm gonna go by the year, and just say Coop. Okay, just go by the year. Fair enough. Because I'm gonna forget somebody. I'm going to forget somebody if I keep going back. That was my, that was going to be my answer. Like, I think you can't minimize how good Cooper Flagg was last season, yeah. his his senior year and his rise and, you know, the level he was playing at in high school. I think you, you like, he was, he's a mega young star going mm-hmm. to Duke. Like, he had a phenomenal high school career. So I was, I was going to say Cooper Flagg as well. Yeah. Okay. Chat GPT answer. AJ is often regarded as the best high school prospect since LeBron James or Kevin Durant mm. in terms of his combination of size, skill, and potential. He's drawing comparisons to some of the top prospects from past decades because of his dominant performance, high basketball IQ, and the way he effortlessly stands out against elite competition. Mm, mm. Come on. Okay. Cool. I, I think you well, got a little yeah. more. Yeah. 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 I, I, think, I, think, I think it's not updated. I think it's not updated. <laughs> it's not updated. <laughs> different, yeah. boy. We graded it on oh. that scale. And there you have it. <laughs> Big different. Okay. The next question is Who is AJ's NBA player comp? AJ, you're up first. I think, well, I get a lot, I said I get a lot of PG and T Mac, but we'll see what, what it says. Yeah, I said. Okay. P, who you got? I, I I like the T Mac comparison. I like the T Mac comparison as far as the explosiveness, the bouncy, the the lanky, the you know, because he is great offensively, and people don't talk enough about T Mac's defensive side with his his length and you know his IQ. He was underrated as a defender as well, and and AJ has the chance to do both at a high level. Yeah, I so I like the that. comparison. I like okay. the comparison right there. The answer the chat GPT gave was Kevin Durant. AJ like Durant. You know is what? Tall. I don't see it. I don't see it. And that's you got my, this comparison my, before. Yeah, I've got a comparison before. I think it's just because I'm taller than everybody. I just shit over people, but I don't see it. They they had an other options category, and in there was Jason Tatum, Paul George, and Brandon Ingram for what it's what it's worth. And that's my top mm. five right there. That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I can see a little bi. Yeah, I can see a little bi in your game. Bi plays okay. at his own pace. I seen this. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can see that a little bit like bi. All right, AJ. This question is only for you. What bees song would describe AJ? My son bees. Uh, he got some unreleased stuff. That I got. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> he do got some unreleased stuff. Little that I got. flex, but little flex. Love it. I'll say free shiest. Chat GPT's answer a V song that could describe They're going to choose a mainstream a, song. They're going to choose a like non drill. G O M D. I could be saying that incorrectly because it carries a vibe of effortless confidence and ambition. Just like AJ's game, the track showcases V's ability to glide over the beat, much like AJ's smooth style of play on the court. That's fair enough. Does it work for you? That works. Okay. That's, that made the playlist. Okay. 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 I made the playlist. I, I don't think I heard that song. Either of I. That's why I was like, uh, I'll, I'll have to. We're yeah, from? Yeah. Michigan, Detroit, right? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Mm. Got to support them. Wow. Now, AJ, we like to do things a little different here on our show, man. And uh, with all the new up and coming stars, we like to close out the conversation with them asking their own question to the one and only PG over there. And, you know, whether if it's Juju Watkins, Tyrese Maxey, Chet Holmgren, you name it, and they all put PG on the spot. 
So with that said, my man, I want you to just ask this man whatever you want. Don't be afraid. You can ask him how much money he got in his pocket right now. <laughs> no, nah, I got, got something written down. <laughs> mm-hmm. right, go ahead and, and you got the last oh, question of the show, my man. He coming Look, with the written. Okay. What you wish you you could tell somebody around my age to help you evolve even as a better player in the league what it was today versus than what it was back then? Mm, that's a great question. Love it. Good, good question, AJ. When you think of the evolution of where the game is going, because you got to understand, when I came into the league, the NBA was two bigs. You had a a power forward who was a seven footer or six ten, and he was two fifty, two sixty, solid postman. And then you had a brute big man as a center. And so, I think where guys have been high prospects or guys have been really good. They've been stuck in these eras and haven't figured out how to continue to transcend with the game, right? They get stuck in this phase and they can't follow where the game is trending. Um, I think that vice is just being open, always adding new stuff to your game, always try to make yourself uncomfortable, whether it's in workouts and training, like really challenge yourself. Um, you know, whether, you know, you know, I, I think what was important to me is always being uncomfortable, which in 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 retrospect, it made me comfortable in 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 moments. So my advice to you, bro, is just follow the trend, man, and, and always take something every year and add it to your game, add it to your play style. Obviously, hone in on what you're great at and make that your staple. But then take in more stuff to kind of real well round yourself um, because the game is going to change and it's scary where it's at now. It's going to be, it's going to be a totally different game five years from now, 10 years from now, the NBA is going to play a whole lot different. So just, you know, be adaptable, be a sponge, be a student. Yeah. I, I think that's what I can, I can really say my time in the NBA has that's like, if I could tell my young, younger self that it's just, you know, don't be afraid to just, you know, continue to follow the trend and, and continue to make yourself uncomfortable and, and, you know, just continue to keep well-rounding yourself. It's fair. Mess with it. Love, gang. True vet right there, man. That was great. True AJ, I know you got some more questions. Pink. I think we gotta no, got to give him one more. I got one more. I, I did. Come on. Hey, this yeah, is, yeah, this, yeah. this is you. Come you on. Keep, ask keep more. Keep firing. So what, what kept you motivated since we were talking about motivation? Mm-hmm. What kept you motivated after your injury and what did you learn from the situation? Yeah, what kept me motivated was like everyone ruling me out. Like after snapping my leg and people saying like, oh, he won't be the same. He, you know, I had a I had a bar that I set for myself before the injury happened. I felt like I was trending and being on that next cusp of like NBA greats. Like I felt like I was on the rise. And the injury happened, and then everyone counted me out. Everybody ruled me out. He'll never be the same. He won't play the same. You know, this injury was, you know, everybody was devastated, but they was like, man, this injury ended him, ruined his career. And so that was motivation for me as can I get back to what I was or can I be better than what I was? And what would that look like? And I wanted to be the success story. I wanted to be. I wanted to have that conversation with people that are in the same situation and be like, bro, you can persevere through it. You know what I mean? It's hard work. It's going to challenge you, but you can persevere through it. And that was kind of just my motivation to kind of rise back and get back to, to where I was at. And was I ever the same? Hell no. But I felt I was as close as I possibly could, given the work that I put into my craft. Um, and so for a lot of ways I did get better cause the game slowed down for me and it was, it was a lot more skill instead of just natural God given abilities. Now I had to actually think the game through. Um, so in a lot of ways I did get better, but from an athletic standpoint, yeah, I, I definitely lost a little step from that step from that injury. You got one more AJ? That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, there you have it. Hey man, we just want to know where. Can we keep up with you throughout the year? Let the people know where you playing at. I'm playing at Utah Prep. Uh, 
<laughs> Utah prep in a hurricane, Utah. And you can okay. catch me all over the country. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna play national schedule. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. So there, there you have it. I'm sure, you'll be watching ESPN games. Shout out, AJ. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully, we'll know soon about the college decision. We'll all be in tune on that. Yes, yeah, soon. I just sadly, like sadly, lie, Fresno man. didn't. Sadly, Fresno State didn't. Damn, Fresno out. didn't make the cut. Yeah. They didn't reach out, so I couldn't. Well, hey, if you Fresno need a platform to announce it, you know we're always here. We just Yo, J- Jackie, where'd you go to college? Man, <laughs> Pasadena City College, man, for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> I went for about a month, got right into acting. You did acting straight a fool, man. Uh, Come on. Actor university. Uh, actor me? university, actor gang. Uh, hey, little bro, we don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you got a busy schedule. You probably got to, knowing you, you got another workout to attend to. No, nah, I'm resting. I, that's actually what I learned, too, from working out with the pros. Rest is important. I don't overwork yeah. myself. Resting is... It's just as much as you getting your work in, resting is yeah. right up there with it. Take care of your body. About to hop in that hot tub. There you go. Hey, man, we'll, li- we'll let you get to it. This was an awesome episode, bro. We appreciate, appreciate you y'all. stopping through, joining Podcast P. See you, AJ. And, Can't uh, wait to see you play in person, man. We'll be locked appreciate in. Appreciate y'all. All right, y'all. It's about time to get up out of here. What you got for that two-minute report, Bunky? So, look, when we close every show, we're going to introduce something called the two-minute report. Much similar to how NBA officials have to answer questions about the final two minutes of games. We are allowing our fans to ask real specific questions every week during the final moments of our show. And P, you can't duck any smoke, okay, on any of the questions. So with that said, are you ready? Let's get it. Let's get it. What you got? Meg died. Damn, this one got me dying laughing. Hold on. (laughs) Game four of the World Series is tonight. And Pete, I saw this question on Reddit, and it had me laughing, okay? If NBA mm-hmm. coaches have to wear uniforms like Major League Baseball managers do, what would, <laughs> who, would who would look the most out of place? <laughs> I, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think Pop. I think Coach Pop. Could you I see Pop Coach- wearing a jersey? This, I, this can't see pop. In, in I can't shirt. see Pop. I can't see Pop wearing. And he got on some, some some tennis shoes. <laughs> I picture Nigga. Pop. I picture Pop would have high knee socks. Yeah. Shoes <laughs> tied, school. choked out at the tongue. It's like right. I, I, he, he gonna, gonna he sleeves, gonna go elbow. he gonna go all the way in, bro. I think he gonna really like he gonna try to be funny. Is he gonna wear some goggles too? <laughs> <laughs> he might. No, he might. I do. He I might do have some get, some wristbands on. Oh, like I can feel. I feel like Pop will go all the way out. I would. Well, I wouldn't want to see what's Miami uh, Heat coach name. Oh, Coach Bro. <laughs> coach Bro. <laughs> I don't want to see him or Doc Rivers <laughs> in no uniform in today. <laughs> <laughs> can you see Doc Rivers? With the big G coming up. <laughs> uh, you wrong for that. Uh, what do you mean? What do you, what, what do you mean? mean? <laughs> so my turn is not on the player. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Anyway, let me change it up. The, the next question. Uh, the G League is experimenting with the idea that full court heaves won't count against players' shot percentage. As you can see mm. from the screen, to qualify, the heave has to be greater than 36 feet from the basketball court. Okay? So, mm. my question is, have you ever intentionally held the ball late during a full court heave in order to keep your shooting percentages high? Keep it real with us, too, P. Nah, I'm letting it fly. I like those shots. Like, I'm, I'm hunting those down. I don't care how far I am from the basket. Like, I don't. I don't care about shooting percentage. Like I don't care what my my field goal is. Like I'm I want the attempts. Like yeah, so I'm I'm thirsty for those cuz I feel like I can make it. I feel like I got a good chance of making it. I got to give y'all for a fact though. Our boy from our show from the family uh Tyrese Hollaburton, did y'all know he has taken twice as many heaves in four seasons than Kevin Durant has in 16 seasons? I mean, Hollaburton really? actually has one of the highest volume of heaves and the NBA for a star player. And other, really? you know, there's other ones out there like Steph too, though. You know that. Okay, uh, Steph makes sense. But Peyton more than Pritchard. KD. 
Peyton Pritchard's nice at them too. Peyton Pritchard He'd be knocking them down. Yeah, Peyton Pritchard's <laughs> good at those. Luca's good at those. Yep, Luca for Steph sure. That's a crazy obviously stat. is good at those. You got to think yeah. though, Dallas. You got to think in the NBA. They don't man. You, they want to go to the Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? That the yeah. percentages messes your chance up of going to the Hall of Fame. So you know that's all but it I is. Do like I do like it's encouraging players to like now shoot these like it's 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 fun for fans like that's fan engagement mm-hmm. right there fans want to see you heave it and it going in bro like that, that that's an automatic jump out of your seat moment like i think it's it's adding to you know having a more enjoyable time at games from a fan perspective facts all right well fans we still need y'all to do something for us also we need y'all to submit them pod p names for us so don't think we forgot about y'all. So we will be looking into that. And P, with that said, take us home, baby. Hey, with that being said, Bunky, it's a wrap on an amazing episode. Shout out AJ the Banson for coming through Podcast P. Blessing the Podcast P family. Hey, man, it's been an awesome, awesome episode, man. This is going to be another great one. Appreciate y'all for tuning in and stay tuned for the next.